Hello guys, Sapphire Agami with the F Oh, hold on. <clears throat> with the eighth episode of the third season of American um um uh, why oh, okay, yeah. That's <laughs> the eighth episode of the third season of the American Fantasy Drama Series, Once Upon a Time. This episode is titled Think Lowy Thoughts. And boy was it a shocker. Like when I first saw this episode, I was like downstairs or something watching them on my, on my nice little TV. And when it came to the rebel, I was like, what? 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 <laughs> I'm just saying. You you would have not thought. I, would, I didn't see it coming. Like, honestly, I did not see that coming. I did not see it coming. So, I'm going to do the character's past and then do present day Neverland. So, in a local tavern yard, a young boy who is revealed to be a young Rumpelstiltskin. He was so cute. Begs the man not to hurt his father, Malcolm, who's a third car Monte cheat. Later on, Malcolm brings Rumpelstiltskin to a cabin and asks the woman spinning wool to look after him as he attempts to get a real job. Before he goes, he gives his son the corn husk doll as a present. Hours later, the woman sees that Rumpelstiltskin has a huge talent for spinning. While Rumpelstiltskin tells them that he believes that Malcolm will come back, the lady tells him that he returned to the same tavern. The woman advises him to take the magic bean and go someplace where his father's bad reputation won't follow him. Rumpelstiltskin later returned to, to the safe tavern just as the ladies told him, seeing his father playing games again. Rumpelstiltskin coaxes Malcolm to go away somewhere and make a fresh start. Malcolm then remembers the phrase, think lovely thoughts, which he used to comfort himself when, his, when he was an apprentice to a blacksmith. So they use the means to go to a place called Neverland, holding hands. As they arrive in Neverland, Malcolm tells his son to imagine a cake and it appears. He then tells him that in Neverland, anyone can fly. But as he attempts to take off, he falls to the ground because now he's a grown-up. And grown-ups don't fly on Neverland. <laughs> Malcolm remembers needing pixie dust. Ah, faith, trust, and pixie dust. Think happy little thoughts. And it had a little thought. Think of roses, think of snow, think of snow. That's it. Okay, that's enough. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Okay, that's a good one. But Rumpel Silson is too scared to climb up the tree, the tall trees that had the pixie dust flowers. I didn't know you guys about the flowers. So, oh, snap. So I could go to Neverland and just grab me some pixie dust because they in flowers. I thought I thought they were like in a, well, in Tangle Bell's, um, uh, franchise, uh, the pixie dust is in this big, you know, this big tree that you have, you know, special fairies like Terrace, which I do not think is a is a fairy name. So everybody else's fairy name sounds like a fairy name, you know what I'm saying? Like Tinkerbell, Silver Mist, Clink, Bobble, Iridessa, Lady Clarin. See, everybody name sounds like a fairy name, then you get to Terrence. I'm like, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like, really? That's the best name you come up with his character? Terrence? All these cool fairy names, Terrence. Anyway, so Malcolm tells his son Rumpel to wait, to wait, and he'll get enough for both. As he climbs up the tree, he sprinkles some um, dust on himself, saying, "I want to fly." But just then, the shadow comes and mocks him, telling him he doesn't belong. On the ground, Rumpel still skin little with weeps, thinking his father has met what has met with an accident after an item falls from the tree. But then his father climbs down to comfort him, telling him that Neverland is only for children. Unfortunately, as Rumpel Silskin suggests they go somewhere else, Malcolm says he know he knows he would just go back to his old ways if he did. The shadow then comes to the rump to take Rumpel Stilskin, believing it's the only way the father can can believe he's a young man. So as the shadow takes a uh, Rumpel Stilskin away, it's a big revelation. He witnesses a green spell coming over Malcolm. Who suddenly turns into the infamous Peter freaking Pan. I was like, wait, wait. But I said, I was like, wait, what? So Peter Pan is Rumpelstiltskin's papa. Thus making him Neil's grandfather and Henry's great, great. Oh, it's just, oh my goodness. This is one mess of family. <laughs> so I heard this family got some issues. A name that Rump, uh, Peter Pan, a name that Rumpelstiltskin w would give his lost doll after he returned to stay with the women after he tells them of what had happened, as the women believed that he would be better off without a father. Pan and the Shadow then arrive at Skull Rock, where the Shadow tells Pan that the island was created when Pan decided to stay. 
The hourglass shows how much time he has before he stops being young and dies. In doing so, the shadow tells Pan that he broke the rules by staying because, it never, because Neverland is a place for children to visit in their dreams. So, unlike the uh, movie version of Peter Pan, where, you know, um, Peter Pan is this young boy who, caused, you know, who has fun and mischief, stays with lost boys, they say that forever, he never grows up. The twist to this story is that the fact that Neverland, you're only supposed to visit when you're a kid in your dreams, and you're supposed to go back. You don't stay in Neverland, you go your yeah, ass back. This is like, it's like, Neverland is like, Spring break for kids, like, uh, uh, party, woo woo, have some fun, eat some cake, ah, I party, don't got to go to school, uh, scrub school, what, uh, 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 you know, it's like a fun place, and you're supposed to go back after your dreams are over, you know, you just go there, it's like a, it's like a momentary vacation, ah, you know, oh no, but not your boy, he wants to stay young forever, stating that he was never meant to be a father. So now, given that fact, that that statement, so I'm curious about Robert Tusk's mama. Like, did you guys, like, were you guys, like, young, and you thought you were so in love, and you did something you were supposed to do, and now, hey ho, nine months later, you got a baby? Was it one of those situations? Because <laughs> I'm guessing, from guessing from that statement that Pan makes, is that, was, is, is, was it that incident where you was young, you thought you were so in love, nine months later, hello, baby? So in present day, Neverland, as Emma, Neil, Hook, David, Tinkerbell, and Mary Margaret, that's a lot of freaking names, <laughs> walk through the forest towards Pan's camp, Emma confronts Mary Margaret about staying behind with David, which made Emma c- concerned that she would once again be separated from her family again. Oh, she's like, I just found you guys. Don't leave me. <laughs> oh. As Regina and Gold emerge from uh, from another location, the reunion does not go smoothly as Neil tells everyone involved that Gold is planning to kill Henry because of prophecy, which is not true. Damn you, Neil. <laughs> they all draw their weapons on him, and they draw them quick, like... And Regina was like, really, Rumpel? Really? You know how much I care about Henry. Really? That's how I have been giving him a look. I'm like, damn. Everybody was turned on Rumpel. He ain't had not a single friend. I was <laughs> like, oh, damn, you got single without quick. Um, but Gold proves his legitimacy by handing over Pandora's box to earn their trust and tells Neil he has no idea who he's up against as Gold explains to Neil that Pan was responsible for a father for his father's Malcolm's demise. Despite this, Neil made sure that Gold does not use magic and Gold agrees to it. Meanwhile, Hook and Emma discuss Neil's fate and the future of David when Gold says he may know a cure as he remembers the elixir that saved him back in Storybook. As they finally reach Penn's camp, the party come up with a plan to keep the lost boys at bay. So Regina waves her hand and causes a sleeping spell and the boys doze off. They then hear Wendy and Emma sees her in a cave and Neil breaks her free. She's startled to see Neil, who she knew as Belfire, now growing up. She explains that she went back to Neverland to save him because she remembered Neil telling her that his parents were dead, to which a stunned gold replied, You told him that? But Bay said that it was better than saying his father abandoned him. As first, Wendy lies to, rest- to the rescuers about Pam, but Gold recognizes she is lying and she comes clean. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, you can't fool a liar, boo-boo. You can't fool a liar. Because he's like, I don't know. And Gold's like, really? I'm <laughs> he was like, oh, go calm down. Because <laughs> he's about to get a grocery work. He's like, oh, go calm down, calm down. He's like, she is lying. I know a lie when I see one. Um, so she admits that Pan really wants the heart of the truest believer so he can be immortal, which is actually Henry's heart. Boy. Um, it is a trade, she says, because once Pan has the heart, Henry will die. So they trade him places. They play places. Neil promises he will save her brothers, and Regina tells Wendy that John and Michael are safe in Storybrook. They make a plan to rescue Henry, and so David and and, and well, yeah, they make a plan to rescue Henry and David, and send David to Dead Man's Peak to get water to make a cure. Emma then tells everyone involved that they will all return home once they rescue Henry. So Emma, Regina, Gold, and Neil race off to Skull Rock. Woo! Following the leader, the leader, the leader. We're following the leader wherever he may go. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is like for talking about people. It's like you can't help but sing the song. As the individuals prepare for prepare their plan of attack, Peter Pan and Henry arrive at the Skull Rock. 
where Pan tells Henry, who is unaware that Pan is actually his great grandfather, that he can save magic. And Henry believed him. Oh, poor Henry. So naive, so naive. <sighs> As they enter the caves, Pan casts a protection spell to keep anyone with the shadow out. The individuals then reach the island where Gold eventually penetrated the spell because he has no shadow. The other members finally believe that he wants to save Henry and Neil gives the box back to him, followed by Regina and Emma casting an eclipse spell so they can enter. Henry and Pam finally enter a large chamber that contains a large hourglass on top of a pedestal of golden skulls that shows the magic slowly fading, indicating how much time is left for magic in Neverland. After looking at this, Pan tells Henry it's time to save magic, but now he but he now wants to use Henry's heart rather than believing in it. Then lies to Henry that he'll live forever in Neverland if he does this. He is then interrupted by his presence as Go shows up to confront his father and to stop him from going through with this and takes off the box. Pan says they are really alike because both abandoned their sons, but Go says he regretted ha- leaving his son the moment he let go and spent the rest of his life trying to get him back. Pan then responds, why do you think I call myself Peter Pan? And asks Gold to put the box down so they can make a fresh start. After Gold refuses, he waves his hand over the box, but nothing happens. As Gold discovers, Pan switched the boxes. And then Pan waves his hand over the real one and places Gold inside. Pan then returns to finish his scheme to take Henry's heart by giving him magic to allow him to remove it. As Henry succeeds in doing so, Emma, Regina, and Neil arrive to stop Henry from giving it to Pan. But Pan tells Henry that they are lying to him because they are adults, even though as they tell Henry they believe in him because they love him. Unfortunately, Henry, believing that he can save magic, gives his heart to Pan, who has now emerged victorious and is plot to become immortal. As Henry dies as a result. In the opening sequence, the Skull Rock is featured, and our cultural reference for this episode is when Rumpel tells Neil that Peter Pan destroyed my father is, a, is similar to the scene in Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Uh, it's 4, right? Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's 4, Episode 4, A New Hope. Oh, wait, hold up. Yeah, it's Episode 4, A New Hope. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get my Roman numerals together. Well, it's in the... the, 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 the the one titled A New Hope, shoot, in which Obi-Wan Kenobi tells Luke Skywalker about the, the story about a Jedi called Darth Vader, who was a pupil of Co- Kenobi before he turned evil. Um, also, in this episode, um, The Shadow is voiced by um, American musician Marlon Manson. And not only that, that the detail and the reveal of Peter Pan's true identity was kept a secret from the cast members, who were banned from finding out until the episode aired. Like, really? How the heck you do that? Oh, I know they probably did to try to keep them away. Because usually I know they're they supposed to get scripts. So they probably just, the characters that wasn't in the background story, they probably just had, didn't have, they didn't have that, that part in their script. Like, you know, Snow and Emma and whatchamacallit. They probably didn't have that in their script. So they didn't, wouldn't know. Uh, but I think that's a good thing, though. Because if they don't know, it's going to add more of a shock to to the characters when they finally say, like, wait, what? It's going to add more of a shock to them, that, to their characters. You know, you get a real, you get a, like, I guess you get a more, like, oh, my God, authentic, you know, response. You know? So that episode was pretty good with the whole revelation of Pizza Pan be, is from Pacific and Father. And, and, and um, they have some people like, Henry was talking about Henry, talking about, oh my God, he's so stupid. Why would you not believe your parents? Then, then me, granted, Henry should have believed his, both his parents, both, um, Regina, Emma, and Neil. But then again, how often has those three people lied him? I mean, he, him, one, Henry didn't even know Neil was his dad until they found him, like, what? Let's see, let's see what season, um, what, last season? And Neil, Neil should have been, could have been, kind of came to never, um, Swordbrook because he got signed a postcard saying that the curse is broken. He could have, he could have been came back, but he didn't. He avoided it because he didn't want to see his papa, so it's cowardice on his part. Uh, in case of Emma, Emma even lied about him, even lied to Henry about his dad in the first damn place, talking about he was a firefighter, he died of fire. Like, really? I was looking at her like, this is going to bite her in the ass. Watch, watch. Well, oh, oh, look what happened. It, bought it, it bit her in the ass. So, and then when it comes to Regina, 
she's the evil queen and she, you know, she made promises to Henry that kind of occasionally got broken, but she's trying to do better. So, Henry already has had people lie to him before, so it's like, mm, cause you gotta think, you gotta think about it on Henry's part. Okay, my parents are, he's, in his, in his mind, he's probably thinking of it this way. Okay, all three of these people have so far probably already lied to me at one point in their life. And so far, he and so far to him, Peter Pan hasn't lied to him so far, even though Pan has been lying to him this whole freaking time. But Henry's like thinking about it, and then Henry, he's like the hero is supposed to always do the good thing. So to in Henry's mind, he's 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 being a hero and he's doing something right. He's trying to save magic. So in Henry's mind, he's doing a good thing. So that was that episode of Once Upon a Time titled "Think a Lovely Thoughts." Next week's episode. Um, Sunday's episode um is gonna be on the December third, I believe. Or December first. It's gonna be in December. It's gonna be titled Save Henry because Henry is dead and Regina is absolutely pissed. Like I mean, it's like this is my thing though. It's like when it comes to certain characters and you know, in you know, stuff, especially in this in this thing, two people I would not piss off under any circumstance. It's Rumpelstiltskin and the the Queen Regina, the Evil Queen. I would not piss those two's off for no fucking reason whatsoever. So, um, a, a mini summary of what happened on this episode of Save Henry is going to it's going to be this ninth episode of the third season. It's going to be on December first. Um, it's supposed to be as Henry's life hangs in the balance. The group races to prevent Peter Pan from gaining full magical powers from Henry's heart. Meanwhile, in Storybrooke's past, with Mr. G- with Mr. Gold's help, Regina attempts to fill a void in her life by adopting a baby. So I can't wait to see this. And um, episode after that, episode 10, will be titled The New Neverland. So I'll see you guys next Sunday.